Now welcome to our 2022 Tracer 22 RBS. Starting right in your back bumper here. If you're just gonna reach in, pull that cap out of there, you're gonna find the sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here. It's how be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit and keep things that bit fresher. Cap just presses into place. A couple of steps forward, you'll find your sewer system. So you just kind of press on that cap, give it a turn, it'll pop on out of there. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. That black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. Of course, it's gonna be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically cleaner water, dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Straight up from there, you'll find your power inlet. So as you pop that open, you'll find a little notch in the bottom corner. It's gonna line up with that notch there. Press those in together, little eighth turn will lock it down. And you get that threaded collar in the back there to really lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and we're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Towards the front. And we got your water drains down here. So one towards the front, I believe, is your water tank drain. So it just allows you to drain out your fresh water tank. The two behind it are gonna be your low point drains. The purpose of those guys is to drain out the water lines from the unit. So if you're leaving the unit for a while and you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can just drain it all out before you leave. Or before winterizing the unit, you just wanna drain all that water out before pumping it into the freezer. Through. Compartment here, as you open that up, on the right side, you get your kind of control systems here, or water inlets. So on the top, you get a little service light. On the left side, there's a solar panel plug-in. Here in solar panel, plug right into there, charges your batteries. On the right side, you get a cable inlet on the top. Satellite on the bottom, the coax cables plug into their respective ports, fire up at your TV locations. City water inlet on the right side here, your water hose will plug into there, turn on the water and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. On the left you get your fresh water inlet, so I'm just going to pop that cap out of there. Same water hose stick into there, turn on the water and that fills up your fresh water tank. Bottom left corner here's your battery disconnect switch, so you can see it's currently turned on. If you're to flip it the other way and to pull it out, that's your battery then turned off. So whenever you're storing the unit, you just want that turned off in use, you want it turned on. Your outside shower here, so you get those two little ears there. Those are gonna line up into there, give it a little ace turn, that'll lock it into place, then you get your hot and cold water. The other end of the ho this hose, it's just standard garden hose end, so you can just kind of attach what you like. Black tank flush valve down here, so you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So what you'll do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water, and that'll flush out that tank for you. Storage compartment right beside it. Does see straight through to the other side. Inside of here, you'll find your water hose. Inside of that water hose, you can find your perk adapter. It's a 30 amp cord into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Around front, that little black box back there is your tire pressure monitor sender. So you'll have a little handheld unit that you'll have inside of your truck so you can see what your tire pressures in the trailer are doing. The battery for the unit is housed inside of here. So as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pins, your tow vehicle, that battery's charging for you. Two knobs there, you're gonna loosen those off, push them back. You can flip on this, you can flip this cap open. You can see your propane tank's there. For the unit. Pull this right off and I can show you that changeover in the back. So it's currently red, just letting us know we've got no propane in the system. The arrow is pointing over to here, so we're running off of this tank. So as we turn that on, it should go green, letting us know we've now got propane in the system there. If it were to go red while you got that tank open, it's just letting you know that tank's now empty. At that point, just flip over to the other side, run off of this tank while you get the other one filled. In front's the power tongue jack, so you get your light switch on the left. On the right, down is up and down is, down is up and up is down. Other end of your storage compartment here. Same magnetic latch holds it open. It's wide open to the other side. Inside of here, there is a little light, so you can't quite see the switch too well, but it is a dual function switch. So over to the one side, there's going to be a two. Over to the other is going to be a one. So one is going to be just on. Two is dual function, where it'll use the motion sensing to turn itself on or off. Little leash latch here. So we've got the, dog, got the dog out with it. You can tie him down. And I missed one thing in the apart compartment here. So just open that back up. You got the switch up there, that is for your stabilizer jack. You press and hold extend, and the jack makes it go down. So as you can see, one kind of goes before the other. So it's not going to level your unit, it's just going to kind of stabilize it. So once those are down all the way, we'll hear some load on the motor. Once you hear that, you're going to stop. If you are to continue extending, it can actually strip the gears right out of that motor which of course we don't want to be doing exhaust to your furnace here so if you're ever running your furnace you just make sure it's not blocked off it does get hot 
power outlet there as well as the cable and satellite outlets if you want tv outside you got it up from there you'll find your two exterior speakers and then inside of here as we open that up you get a little outside kitchen so you're just gonna undo that travel latch and slide it on out then you get a latch in the back there to lock it open pull that collar back and you can undo the hose right underneath we'll find another little hose that we can attach to and then to the back to the front not to the back we get our hose back here so just pull our dust cap out of there make sure that the valve that's in there is closed off and you can push the collar back attach your hose once that hose is attached you can open up that valve with that valve open you cannot undo that quick connect so it's just kind of an added safety we can put this on open bring our wings over there turn it over to light and then just kind of with the igniter there you go once you're done, you're just turning it off, letting it cool down, put these wings back in, close it off. Close off that propane valve, undo that collar, stick our dust cap back in there, undo it from the stove. And then I just like to attach it to itself to make sure that nothing's getting inside of there. And then we can store it back away. bottle opener by your entry door and then in the back of you you'll find your hot water tank so just get that keyway there you're gonna line that up and you can pop it on open all your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit before turning it on though we just want to hit that relief valve right there you should get some water out if you're not getting any water out of there there's a chance it's empty if it's empty you do run the risk of burning out your elements you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up lock a bit back with the keyway once you're done you also get your spare tire back here straight up from there you'll find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera and then right behind the bumper there is the switch for your rear stabilizer pad. So now making our way inside the unit, that assist handle there just up 90 degrees and will fall into place. Then you can open up your door. Door is on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits where you leave it. Steps, you're going to pull that knob in towards the center, then you can pull them on out. These two knobs there, for you to pull them, you can extend or retract your legs just based on your campsite needs. And as we step inside, First things first is right on the left there, you get your fire extinguisher, that's standard, pull a pin, point and shoot. The drawer space here, as well as a little closet space. Then up top, you get all your light switches. On the left there, you get your interior lights. On the center left, you get your awning light. Center right does your speaker lights. And then the far right there does some accent lights across the front of the unit. This light right here inside your entry door is the same motion sensing light you had in that front compartment as well as what you'll have in the bathroom. So you can see the two on the side there, that's motion sensing, and then one is just on. Below all of your light switches, we get your slide switch. So press and hold out and that slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, the motors are just going to turn themselves off automatically. Simple as that. There you go. Awning is right beside it. Press and hold out and the awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're gonna see a little black flap as well as the black metal tube. Once we see those, we'll let go of the switch. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case fabric will be underneath your tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating your growth of mold and mildew. Not quite gonna get all the way out, but you can just kind of see the end of that flap just starting to come down there just another little bit more and then you'd see your tube now if it were to start raining it's of course going to hold some water anyways so what you're going to do is grab either arm front or rear and you just pull straight down on it then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head allowing water to then run off if you like that angle better because it does give you more shade you can do the same thing with the arm up front before you bring it back in though you just want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended just so you're not running the risk of bending them then you press and hold in, the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just going to watch to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is that it does catch a lot of wind. So just make sure once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you're bringing it back in. Again, just so you're not going to risk of bending your arms. So this little sticker beside your control panel there, is the Lippert One Control app. So if you were to download that app, enter your device name as well as your password, that will allow you to kind of control everything off of this control panel through your phone. On the other side of your bathroom door, you get your thermostat here. So that power button there, you're gonna press and hold that and that'll turn it on. Power button's also your mode. So you can see we're starting up in fan right now. So we can just select our fan speed of low and high and that'll just move some air around. 
hit mode, it'll come down into dry. So at that point, it's gonna run the low fan with the compressor just to try and get rid of any sort of humidity. Hit it again, it comes up into cool. At this point, it's actually gonna try and cool down the unit. So you can select your temperature there, select your fan speed, low, high, or auto. With the air conditioner going, you've got two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case we'll be using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air, or you can just open it up. It'll dump all of its air into the living room here. When you first get out to your campsite, you want that open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then close it off to start moving the air throughout. Hit mode again after cool, it'll come down into heat, it'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on your furnace. There's no fan control over your furnace, it's just kind of on is on, you just have temperature control. Little black portals as well as some floor registers to move the furnace air. And then after heat, if you hit mode again, it just comes into fan. To turn it off, press and hold that power button, and that'll turn it all off. Straight down from there is your LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Now I'll come into your bathroom. Like I said outside, you do have the same lights bin here that you have by the entry door. Right above our heads here is our ceiling vent. So you can see you got the little switch in the back there, turns on the fan, and just turning that knob to open and close. Toilet down here, flips on open, flushes front and center. Another little furnace outlet back there. For the shower, you're gonna kind of pull those doors in together, and then you can undo that travel strap we'll open them up you see you get the nice standard hose with the stainless head and hose sorry hot and cold water purse closing them you're just going to close them tightly again make sure that travel latch gets in there simple as that medicine cabinet here down below it you'll find a little chemical sample for your toilet so after the first couple of times you use it you'll just take this whole bottle pour it down there and that'll just help break down whatever's in there hot and cold water at the sink of course this panel underneath it's just a close off panel it is not storage monitor panel down here so you get your water pump switch in the bottom corner turn that switch on turns on your water pump drawing it up fresh tank to pressurize your lines your battery you can see we're currently c for charging g would be good f is fair l is low your fresh tank as you fill that up will go to a third two thirds and full same idea for your black and your gray hot water tank controls up top here so on the bottom left you can see that or sorry in the bottom right you can see the little flame so that's just letting us know that that switch works for propane if that red light there would come on it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up at that point just off back on to reset it on the side there, you get that little thunderbolt, letting us know we're firing it up on electricity. G5 protected outlet, test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. And then your entertainment area here. So you, see you get your TV that is on straps there, so just for travel. It is also on a mount, so you can kind of swing it out and point it where you like it. Beside it, you get your power outlet. Up top, here's your cable and satellite outlet, and that's your antenna outlet already hooked up. Turning that antenna on, you just hit that button there and get that little green light letting you know it is turned on. It will also help clear up your stereo signal. Super simple with the stereo. Power button there turns it on. Mode to cycle through all your modes and select to get through all your settings. Volume controls there. Zone 1 is the sound bar itself. Zone 2 is the outside set of speakers. Underneath here is a little light. There's also a power outlet in the back corner there. You get all your drawer space here as well. As well as some more storage. Get your microwave up top here, it's pretty standard, just like home. Below that's your range vent, so you get the fan, close the light. The bifold cover just flips on back. You're gonna turn the knob over to the little frame there, take the sparker, and just fires right up. I will just mention that you could, the first time you go to use your propane system, especially if you've been away from the unit for a while, it will take a minute to fire it up, just because it'll have to clear air of the propane lines, it's perfectly normal. Once you're done, just make sure it's cooled off, and then you can close that lid, up, lid down. For the oven, you're gonna open it up, Turn it over to that little pilot, hit the sparker a couple of times, and you can see that flame in the back there gets going. Once you get it going, just hold the knob for another few seconds, then you can release, the flame will hold itself, turn up to your desired temperature, and she fires right up. Once we're done, we can turn it back down just to pilot, and it'll hold just the pilot for you, but if you're going traveling, you just want to make sure it's right off. Switch beside it, press it up, does your knobs, press it down, does the knobs and the oven. Down underneath that, you get your converter, press it top and center, pops on open. All of your breakers in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. And all of your fuses are on the right side there. Some more drawer space here. So that's that tire pressure monitor receiver. So that's that piece that you'd hold inside of the truck for you. Just tells you what your pressures are at. Storage up here. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course, with the stainless folding cover and a bit more storage underneath it. It's also a little light down here. Emergency exits, this side and that side are both the same. You're just pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen. Take the sandal here, throw it outside, hop on out. Blinds throughout the unit, all the same. Just sit where you leave them, with the exception of that one, just that traditional style blind. 
returner for your furnace down here. So just to make sure it's not blocked off. And if we pick up the foot of your bed, little storage compartment in there. A little closet space on either side of the bed. There's also a little reading light over each head. Down here is also the same on both sides. You get the power outlets as well as the USB outlets. Your fridge is full volt. So as long as that fridge, as long as you're plugged in with your batteries charged or charging, this guy's going for you. And then in the dinette, your little light here, just push button on the side. The table currently set up as your dinette. If you're to take your table, wiggle it up and out of its legs, your, wig, your legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The table can then sit onto the four ledges there. You'll take that back cushion as well as this filler cushion to fill in your dinette and create your bed. And then of course the storage underneath it. And then lastly is your smoke detector. And there you go. So that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.